The US bond rally continues to boost stock valuations, but Apple sinks after the announcement of sluggish third quarter results. And today, all eyes are on the US jobs data. If the job numbers in the US are strong, some investors might wonder if the bond market rally this week has gone too far. So welcome. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. So the S&P 500 jumped almost 2% to above its 200-day moving average, and Nasdaq 100 gained 1.74% yesterday and tested its 50-day moving average to the upside as the crazy rally in the U.S. sovereign bonds extended to another day. Now, before I move any further and dive into the why and the be careful of it, I would just like to say that a sell-off in Apple shares will likely slow the rally that we've been seeing in the major US indices this Friday because Apple shares dived up to 4% in the after hours trading following the announcement of the third quarter results which showed unfortunately some sluggish Chinese demand for the Apple's iPhone sales and that actually dented the revenue for Apple. The Mac computer sales also fell short of expectations by a bit billion US dollars. Yes, there is no mistake when you're Apple, you can actually miss estimates by a billion US dollars. And all that doom and gloom marked the fourth straight quarter of sales drop for Apple. So that was the longest such decline in 22 years. As a result, well, Apple stock could now sink to the $170 a share level. That level actually matches the critical 38.2% Fibonacci retracement level. If taken out, would let Apple shares sink into the medium term bearish consolidation zone and open the way for further losses. Now, one thing that could save Apple from falling into these dark waters is a further rally in the US bonds, hence a further fall in the US yields. So remember, the US bond rally popped this week because well, the US Treasury said that it would actually borrow a record, record amount for a fourth quarter of a year. But, but that, that amount is still slightly less than previously thought. And you obviously know how the market expectations and how the market pricing works, right? And more importantly, more important than that, the Treasury also said that it will borrow slightly less 3, 10, and 30 year papers. So that's one thing that actually boosted the rally in bonds this week. The other thing is that the Federal Reserve hinted that the interest rate hikes in the US could be coming to an end because the recent surge that we saw in the US long term yields help the Fed tighten the financial conditions without the need for them to announce another interest rate hike. Now, I will repeat that because it is important and because it looks like not everybody remembers that important point. If the Fed sounded so comfortable in not raising the interest rates this month, it is mainly because the US yields and the long-term yields surge at an impressive speed over the past couple of weeks. And that actually did decrease the need for the Federal Reserve to hike the interest race. But if the yields go back to where they were at the speed, I mean, if they fall at this speed, the Federal Reserve expectations will become hawkish very, very quickly from the actual levels. And depending on how far the bond market will go, well, the Federal Reserve could be obliged to hike the interest rates again in December or maybe in January to keep the financial conditions in the US tight enough to fight inflation. So what's going on in the bond market? market is a fine balance, really. The bond market gave the Federal Reserve peace of mind for stopping hiking the interest rates, but the bond market could take it away. Now, for now, activity on Fed funds futures gives around 80% chance for a no rate hike in the FOMC's December meeting and around 20% chance for a 25 basis point hike. And economic data will help the Federal Reserve expectations shape in favor of one side or the other. Now, as you know, our growth in the US remains quite 
strong, really. And one contributor to that strength is the impressive resilience of the U.S. jobs market so far, which actually barely reacted to the interest rate hikes from the Fed. And the Fed thinks that it is because the labor force participation in the U.S. following the pandemic dip is high, and it remains high, and immigration also helps. And according to the consensus of analyst estimates on a Bloomberg survey, while the U.S. economy may have added around 180,000 new non-farm jobs last month, the unemployment rate is seen steady at around the 3.8 percent level, and the wages growth for American workers may have slowed from 4.2 to 4 percent on an annual basis. Those are the expectations. Now, any strength in the job additions or wages growth data today could actually bring some bond traders back to earth and remind them that, hey, if the U.S. jobs market and hence the U.S. economy remains this strong and resilient, the Federal Reserve could turn hawkish again, and that even though the strong jobs data in a context of higher supply is not necessarily inflationary, but it's not something that the Fed really wants either. So the U.S. dollar is steady around a touch below its October high and that strength actually helps other major currencies like euro or sterling, for example, post gains that they would normally not have deserved. And well, this brings me to England, because the Bank of England kept its interest rate unchanged for the second straight month when it met at yesterday's monetary policy meeting. And as the Federal Reserve and as the European Central Bank, the British policymakers said that the interest rates will stay high for long to bring inflation to target in the UK. Now, some now call it a tabletop strategy, but that's where we are right now. Some MPC members in the UK still voted for a 25 basis point hike to make sure that the pose is not premature, but they all said the same exact thing. They said it's too early to talk about the rate cuts. Now, the good news for the UK is that inflation may fall below the 5% mark in October and somewhere near 4.5% level by this year end, which will happily give a perfect, perfect leverage to Mr. Rishi Sunak, who promised or who mostly hoped that inflation in the UK would be halved by the end of this year. So that would be a good thing. But the matter of fact is, at four and a half and five percent, inflation is still more than twice the Bank of England's policy target. So the Bank of England can't really go up there and promise that it's done hiking the interest rates. It could only hope that the cumulative impact impact of higher interest rates on the British economy would do the rest of the heavy lifting and the rest of the dirty job. Now, for the UK, in the best case scenario, the UK's gloomy economic outlook which actually seems to become gloomier as months go by, weighs on demand and brings inflation lower. In the worst case scenario, well, inflation in the UK will remain sticky while the British economy sinks into a recession. And the Bank of England says that they see a 50% chance of a recession in the coming months in the UK. So obviously, the expectation of another interest rate hike from the BOE is down to one in three, and the market is now fully priced in around three quarter points cuts by the end of 2024, even though, even though the policymakers kill themselves trying to convince investors out there that they won't cut nothing. But we will see that. In all cases, the softer economic outlook and the softening Bank of England expectations are quite threatening for the sterling bulls these days, both against the US dollar and against the single currency. This is all for this week. I'm Ipek Özkardeşke and thanks for joining me. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. And follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. And subscribe, of course, to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And don't forget to like these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will see you again next week. And until then, good day trading and have a lovely weekend.